Praise the Lord. Beloved, you're welcome to It's Your Time. I'm Apostle Leon Kofi bringing to you the Word of God. And today, beloved, I bring to you the second part of our New Year message titled Living Profitably. Hallelujah. Beloved, there's a way in which we live that brings profit or that makes us productive. Jesus spoke the parable of the talents to give us insight and understanding that we must increase, we must do well with whatever is put in our hands. And I believe, beloved, the most precious thing that God has given to you is your life. Amen. And how you live your life, what you do with your life will determine whether your life is profitable or not profitable, productive or not productive. But I believe in my heart that this year, 2023, is a year of great possibilities and it's also a new season in our lives and in this new season I believe that God's Spirit will come upon us and give us the wisdom the ability to increase to do well to be profitable as well as to be productive so come with me to Liberty Center of the Lord's Garden Ministry where I preach this on New Year's Day and I know your life is going to be blessed your life is going to be impacted amen and you will indeed live a productive profitable life to the glory of God. Amen. And then some other, <coughs> I think as the Pasebi called some two boys, we paid them, and they weeded that patch. Oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And whilst they were weeding, the people from, and I'm, I'm calling them out, the people from La, whatever, I think some, one of them was driving, early Sunday morning, and then he stopped, he said, what are you doing? And someone was there, so we, someone asked, we are, we are weeding this place. They said, oh, we're even, come, we're even thinking of coming to weed it. Oh, yeah? Then someone some was taking pictures, right? Yeah, someone was taking pictures. And said, why are you taking the pictures? Why are you taking the pictures for? I'm sure he was thinking he was going to the newspaper or to social media. No. We just want to add to what God has given us. Every one of us here, if you're a Ghanaian or you're not a Ghanaian, you live in this country, you are here for a purpose. This is your home. You can go to Timbuktu, go to the moon and back. We are Ghanaian. You are Ghanaian. You are Ghanaian. And we even have someone like Gisela who is a, a Ghanaian now. Right, Gisela? Four. So we, we must add what we can to the nation. Then we are profitable to the nation. Amen? I'm talking about living a profitable life. Hallelujah. The second person did the same but he got according to what he had been given. So one got five, made five, got ten. This one got two, made two more, and got four. No, comp you can't compare. In life, look at this. No two fingers are the same. Some fingers are longer than others. Some are shorter than others. But to make a strong fist, you need all. You need all. So nobody is more important than the other. In order of importance, nobody is more important than the other. But profitability, yes, some people are more profitable than others. And it's my earnest prayer this morning that after this word, you will decide that I want to live a profitable life. I want to be profitable to my family. I want to be profitable to my community, to my nation. I want to live a life that is profitable. That when I stand before the giver of my life, I will have an account to give him. And you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the celebration of your master. Hallelujah. So these two people did this. And the master was pleased with them. Then comes this one. He said, master, I bring you back your one talent. Very annoying man. <laughs> he said, I bring you the one talent you gave because you, I know you. You are a wicked man. Hey, hard words. A harsh man. Investing crops you didn't plant. And gathering crops you didn't cultivate. So that means that in his heart, he had a beef with a master. He had a certain kind of hatred <laughs> with a master. I use the word beef because that's all you are hearing, a beefing, beefing, beefing. You know, and, and sometimes I wonder about that. That people actually are interested in beef. People are beefing, insulting each other. And if you look at their, their, their views, 2.10, 5 game, what, what do you call it? Likes or views, and then you have put a nice, powerful sermon that will help somebody's life, then you get 20 views. 
They don't want to hear good things. Though. People want things that are unprofitable and useless. What are you getting from two people fighting and insulting each other? Nothing. And all these things are things we must take into account in 2023. Even our choices, our lacks, our choices. What are your choices in educating yourself? Don't say, oh, I finished university 40 years ago. No, you are still educating yourself. Anytime you wake up in the morning, anything new that comes to you is a form of education. And bit by bit, it, it changes you. One of the things that really upset my father is telenovela. When you see somebody who's Indian and they are speaking, they've translated the Indian to tree. It's a Kwame. Man can't translate by him. And it's an Indian. <laughs> Why did we have a cold? It's an Indian man talking. And I'm a catcher of Sebra, no one banana. And it's so crass and crude. And my father says that, listen, what is this? Because we have a different culture. They have a different culture. And so somebody has poisoned somebody, and they are so dramatic. Somebody has poisoned somebody. Somebody has gone to, you know, do something bad to somebody. And we are children. They love it. I remember one time there was a little boy who said somebody was going to die. I think somebody died in the tele television. Now this little boy, I think five years, was crying. Ma, ma, what's wrong? It's a, uh, it's a, I think Kunkumbaja or something. Somebody is dead in Kunkumbaja. Crying. That's how emotional the child was. So he was being fed Kunkumbaja every day. Because the mother loves Kunkumbaja and is watching every day. He's being educated. That Kunkumbaja is educating him. So when you see people poisoning people and all that, so over time, over two years, over one year, your mindset will change. There is somebody really, you need to get, you want to get rid of somebody. You can't, you can poison the person. That is why our culture as Ghanaians is changing. We are changing. The things we didn't do before, now we are doing. It's all these imports of different kind of cultures. We are being educated every day. Put this in your pocket. I am being educated every day. Even in your interaction with the people, you are being, somebody should stop me because I think my mouth is running fast. Every, even your interactions with people, you learn something every day. And so, I was talking about this unprofitable seller. He had a beef for this master. And he said, you are, you are a wicked, wicked man. So I took your money and I went and I buried it. I hid it. And here's your money, take it back. He didn't want to make profit for his master. Thinking that that profit would go to his master. But you see, he didn't understand that that profit would be given to him and more would be added to him. You see, in life, when you think you are doing somebody wrong, oh, maybe the profit was coming to you, but you spoiled it. That's what happened to him. They were, the man was going to give him back the profit, and as he did with the other ones, give him more than what he had even made. Amen. Praise the Lord. This was a slothful, lazy servant. And he says, secondly, he was afraid that he would lose the one and went and hid it. That was the second reason. You see, fear, I keep on telling you, fear will stop you. Fear will not allow you to you know, fulfill your life's purpose. Being afraid is the worst thing that you can do for yourself. If there's anything we need to get rid of in our year, in our, this is your new season, is the spirit of fear. And not only fear, because fear is an emotion. Any emotion, whether fear or anything, any kind of emotion, will instruct your actions. So be careful of the kind of emotions you harbor, whether hate, um, you know, lust. When you say, oh, I can't control myself. As for me, I, when I see um, this, I have to eat it because I can't control myself. It's lust. Lust is not just sexual. Lust can be even in the things that we want that we can't, anything that is beyond your control. It's wrong. So I'm talking about fear. And every other emotion, that it was an emotional thing or an emotional decision, secondly, that made him hide the talent that he had been given. And all these two things made him an unprofitable servant. He was unprofitable to the master. He was unfruitful to God. Hallelujah. And that's why he said, you are a wicked and slothful servant. If you knew I reap where I do so, you could have taking it to the bank, invested, and I would have had my profit. These three people represent people in life. All of us here, 
Every one of us can be found in one of these three people. Some are very productive, some are semi-productive, some are unproductive. But today, this word is coming to us so that we'll all become productive. Hello? I'm not talking about wealth alone, but I'm talking about how we use the life that God has given to us. How I use it. If today God were, was to call you, if we were to die today, what would be your testimony before God? And I thought about the lying tributes. You won't go to any funeral and find that everybody, somebody has said, this man is this, was that, or this woman was that. That one, we heard it only once in Akusi. A driver died, and his brother came and said, my brother was a bad man. He came to declare his brother was a bad man. And I think my husband went and said, Nanda, today I've seen something I've never seen before. Somebody actually testified of somebody's bad behavior. And he said all the bad things that the guy was doing in their family. But apart from that, go to any funeral and then the testimony of everyone will be great. The person never went to church. The person never loved God. He said he, was a, he loved God. And they are lying. The person maybe was a wife beater. He said he, he really was a good husband. And there is why his children and a very wonderful father. And the mother said, this woman was a godly woman. She loved God. She did the work of God. He was omobwa. It, it's just for cosmetics, you know. But let the truth come before the giver of the gift. Amen. And let the truth be in the hearts of people. Because when they read all those funny tributes, people are sitting there and say, yeah, right, yeah, right. We all do, we laugh, because we know it's omobwa. But live your life profitably. Amen. So that God himself will be pleased with the account of your life that you will present before him. You come and do a presentation. And that presentation will be pleasing unto our God. Amen. Now, what will you present before God? Number one thing I believe is that our love for God, the presentation on how we have loved God. Because God says that this is the, the only thing that he desires from us, he requests from us. That we should love him with all our hearts, all our minds, and all our might, and serve him with that. So your presentation about how you related to God, how will it be? These are questions for consideration and later meditation for us all. You know, because God says that that's the first, that that's the only thing he desires from you. Deuteronomy 6, 4. He said, listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, the Lord alone, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. So in that presentation, if today you are supposed to make that presentation, how has been your love for God, your service to God, and everything to, towards God, part of your presentation? Then the love for others, how has been your love for other people? How have you related to other people? What have you done with your life that has become impactful to other people? Not just your children, because you see, when you say, oh, I've done the bad, your children are your responsibility. If we are talking about impact, you don't only impact your children. They are your responsibility. No, it is talking about outside your immediate family. What has been your impact on society? There are some people, they came to this world, and their impact on society was terrible. I always mention Adolf Hitler. People who have wiped out nations. That was their impact. That's what they use, the, the gift God has given them to do. But we must come to the place where if we are to make a presentation to God about our love for people, for others, it must be a great presentation. God must acknowledge that, yes, truly, you love people. This morning, I said, first, I don't want my matter to be long. But let me tell you this. I was in a coma once for two weeks. And when I went into the coma, my spirit left. So I knew where I went. I remember everything that happened to me. One of the things God said to me while he was bringing me back, he said, but I'm, I'm sending you back. At this time, I didn't want to come back. But when I think about the wickedness of man here on earth, you've made it. You are before God. Why come back? To face another people, to face another whole something like I'm facing now. No, let me stay. But he said, he said to me, do you remember this person? I'm not boasting, telling you the truth. And the apparition, I call it the apparition, came of a man that I used to go to church with. He was blind. But I realized from his shirt 
that the shirt was supposed to be a white shirt, but had turned creamish brownish. I looked at him, I read he was unkept. So every Sunday, I'll give him money, and I calculated how much a meal costs. And I'll, I made one meal a day, times seven, and give it to him. And I did it so faithfully that, that I was in Legon, so I go home for weekends. That's a Sunday I don't go to church. Daddy Kek will do it for me. You know, and I kept on, he also helped, like that. In the coma, when I came before God, he said, do you remember this one? And a person came. The man sitting like how he always sits like this. I said, yes. I said, yes. Then another one came, a woman. She was a fishmonger. And she, she, she would always come and make the fish. And then she, when you, she's, you are telling her, oh, give me the intro because she would dress the fish. She said, oh, no, no, no. I'll throw it away. Oh, you have a dustbin at the corner there. I'll put it in as I go. And it was so. But one day, God said to me, watch her. Then I said, ah. Then I said, why do you always want to throw the entrance there? Then she said, oh, ma madam, you know, I don't have money. My husband has left me, I think, with about seven children. And she said that she doesn't have money for um, school fees and clothing and things like that. So when you go to get the fish, she doesn't have money to also buy the fish. So they give her six or five, seven pieces of the fish. One is her fish. That's her profit. <laughs> but in order that she'll be able to buy food, and other things for her children. She will sell the seventh one also. So, and she will use some of that money to buy um, condo and all that. So they, they will eat banku, akle, or something with pepper. And the entrails, she will make, she will use the entrails for, for soup. In fact, I felt it deep. I said, you fish, you know, fa. So, oh, my, my baby, now it's okay, you've, you've already, you know, scra you know scraped the fish. If you don't take one, then I'm not paying you. I'm not buying. Take your fish away. But I knew she wouldn't do that. <clears throat> so she took the fish. A lot of things happened between she and I. But she came up. God said, do you remember her? I said, yes. They said, that is why I'm sending you back. He said, Nana, you have loved my people. So I'm sending you back to go and tell my people that heaven and hell is real. Go and tell my people to get ready for the second coming. Go and tell my people that many of them will find themselves in hard positions because they say they are saved, born again, but they are living the life of unbelievers. Go and tell them. That's how I came back. So you see, your love for people is being recorded. Anything you do for, against, with anybody is being recorded. And so we must live our life profitably one to the other. Amen? And then finally, for yourself. Take care of yourself. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Your mind, your spirit, your body belongs to God. That's why God says that anybody who destroys the temple, he will also destroy. So God has given you a gift. And then you abuse your body. You destroy your body. Evil things. Bad things. It feels good, do it. And that and that. Listen. When you abuse your body, God will not be pleased with you. So those of you who always are thinking sometimes of suicide, don't dare. For anybody who commits suicide, you are going straight into damnation. And I know there's somebody here who has been considering sometimes. Your end will not be peace. You will miss heaven straight. You get a free first class ticket to hell. Your body belongs. So, you yourself, be profitable. Take care of yourself. Love yourself. Amen. Love and so do the best for yourself in as much as you can. Amen. And then, listen, we must think, so how can we be profitable? I want to end right now. How can we live a profitable life? The first thing is the, the foundation of everything is the word of God. Take heed to the word. Amen. Take heed to the word. He said, how can a young man keep his way from sin? He said, by taking heed to the word of God. God was sending Joshua on a great mission to lead his people into the promised land after Moses died. And this is the instruction he gave him. He said, with this you have good success. He says to him, he said, be strong and be of good courage. For you will divide the land unto these people. 
He said, be strong and very courageous. But he said, but this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night. Meditate on the word. And do according to everything that is written therein, in it. Then you will make your way prosperous and you have good success. Your life will be profitable. When we take the word of God, we receive it, we live it, we act upon it. So your life will be profitable. You will make your way prosperous. Our new season, the year of our new season, I want change in my life. I need serious change in my life. We want change in our lives. We don't want to be the same. Otherwise, there'll be no point of this new whole new season theme. We want to be changed. We want to be transformed. And a few days ago, the Lord said to me that, listen, Anna, whatever you've been doing right, intensify it. Do it more. So I got that, listen, that whatever I, I, I'm doing right, I should do it better. I should do it more. And whatever I'm doing wrong, I should stop. Simple equation. Simple equation for a productive life. We need to seek productivity in our lives. We, we need to, to be people who impact our world. Amen. Number two, plan. You must have a plan for your life. Many people, you ask them, oh, what are you? Oh, I don't know. I'm just waiting on God to see. And they've been waiting on God for 20 years. More words than action. This year, add action to your words. Plan. What is your plan for this year? What's your plan for your work, your body, and everything? Let's plan. Because if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Anybody who fails to plan, you know, you are just like the wind. Any wind will throw you left and right, left and right. Before, you know, 20 is up, and you did nothing. You did nothing positive. You did nothing constructive. You did nothing productive with your life. Praise be to the name of the living God. Beloved, I believe you've been blessed by this word. And it's my prayer that whoever hears this word will not just be a hearer of it, but a doer of it. Beloved, you can be better than you are today. God has given us room to be better and get better and better and better at the good things that we have or do. And so, beloved, let this word stay in you and practice this word that this year, your desire, your plan is to be more productive, to live profitably so that your account before God will be good, your account before man will be good, and your account even to yourself will be good in that you take good care of the gift of life God has given to you. That is yourself, number one. God bless you, and I pray for you that may the goodness of the Lord overshadow you and your house in this new year. Afishapa, happy new year, and may the best of God's best come to you and your house. Amen. However, if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, this is the time. This is the best time to begin the new year. New life will also be the best. So pray with me as I lead you into this prayer to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, to receive new life in Christ Jesus. Stretch forth your hand and pray. Make this your own prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God who came to die for my sins. Jesus, I confess. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. God bless you, beloved. If you pray this prayer after me, you are born again. Hallelujah. You can now confidently call yourself a child of God. But you need to be discipled. So why don't you join us at Liberty Center of the Lord's Garden Ministry, adjacent trade fair la, for a family, a Christian family, and a united, joyful family who worship together in the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, will be happy to disciple you. So please visit us this and every Sunday. Amen. However, if you are not near any of our branches, which is scrolling on the screen, you can join any good Bible-believing church. The key is you must become a disciple. God bless you. And I want to thank those of you who watch It's Your Time and have been blessed by it and have been a blessing. May God bless you. And if you are also touched today, beloved, to be part of this assignment of God on It's Your Time, to be a blessing onto the ministry, there are bank accounts, a moment number scrolling, you can pick one and then be a blessing to the work of God. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful new year. Avishapa.